All right, so be cool here with Frank Bella from Anthrax. How you doing, man? I'm doing good here in Grand Prairie, uh, where there's snow and freezing weather here, but uh, it'll be hot inside today. That's all that matters. <laughs> so you're just about to wrap up the Killthrax tour. You got uh, about two weeks left with that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, my body tells me. <laughs> <laughs> And then you guys are going to take a little bit of time off and uh, jump right back into Slayer's farewell tour. Yeah, it's, um, we um, we have a, a, I'm waiting for this time off. Hi, I'm like we have uh, seven weeks off. I'm looking forward to spending that with my family because we we have really haven't had a lot of time off. And uh, then we go straight to then we go straight to um, the Slayer tour and start that fun. Now, with Slayer coming to an end, Black Sabbath disbanding, bands like ACDC going through complete lineup changes, Ozzy doing his last tour, Glenn Tipton standing down from Judas Priest, do you see this as an end for a heavy metal and rock? No, why would that, why would that be an end to heavy metal? Anthrax is going stronger than ever. <laughs> you got Metallica going stronger than ever. Megadeth, all, all the bands are doing what they're doing. It's just, you know, certain bands, you know, Hey, look, I, I don't think Slayer will ever die, quite honestly. So I don't, um, I think because this is a, uh, the last tour, I think, you know, you'll always see a Slayer. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'll always have my records. That's what I look at. I don't, so I don't, I don't, I don't see a Slayer. I mean, they're all really good friends of mine. So, um, just because they stopped touring, maybe they'll be one-offs, you know, one-off shows and stuff like that. But, uh, I don't know, but, uh, I don't consider Slayer, you know, There'll, there'll always be a slayer. I don't consider them retiring. It's weird for me to even hear that. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll do one-off shows and we'll get to play with them because I, I truly enjoy playing with them. See, what I meant by that question, it was not obviously right now. I mean, you, like you said, you're going strong. Metallica's going strong. A lot of bands. I'm, I'm just talking about down the line, you know, 20, 30 years from now. Well, down, down the line, I mean, we're all going to be you know, dead. <laughs> 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 the way I look, 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 I want to play for as long as I can play. That's the way I, I genuinely enjoy doing this. Um, it's, it's, I've been very, very fortunate. I know how lucky I am to be able to do this and make a living at it. So I don't look at, um, I don't look at that and take it, take it lightly. So I've been very lucky and I, I truly enjoy playing with the band and uh, we, we love writing songs and all last couple of records and the, the biggest records we've had. Um, so we're in a, we're, in a, we're on a good path, and uh, I look. I, I was I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm a songwriter. This is what we do, and um, I don't see a reason to stop. Quite honestly, um, and until we can fight them, till you can't, right? That's like it, the man. Says. Now, Dave Mustang's being very vocal about a push for one more big four show. He's yeah. He says that you guys are signed up, Slayer will do it, he'll do it, but Metallica's the one band that might do it, not do it, I'm sorry. Was there a chance of doing a, a big three? Well, my, my thing is, um, <clears throat> Metallica, well, again, you gotta remember, we're all, we're all really good friends. We all grew up together, really, in this business, if you think about it. Coming up the ranks and all that good stuff. So, Metallica is the biggest fan, period. And, uh, they deserve that. You know, they deserve that. And it would be better if it was for me to say, I want to do the big four. That would be great. <laughs> we would love to do more big four shows. And because Metallica has the biggest audience. So of course we'd love to be with them. You know, but I mean, Slayer and Anthrax play quite a lot together. Uh, Megadeth and Anthrax, we play quite a lot together. So, uh, we don't know what the future holds. I hope there's more big four shows. So um, we'll see. Uh, you know, if the people want it, if Metallica wants it, it'll happen. So I, I, we're ready for it. That's what I have to say. Now, Dave made a statement that Exodus might jump on the bill if you guys do a big four. Is there anybody else you'd like to see uh, play with you? I like it. Uh, me, I mean, I love Exodus. They're my, they're my friends, and, you know, this is a lot of bands. But the big four, uh, I, I, first, let's get the big four going first. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, 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 let's get the big four going, and then it, you know, again, it, it would be up to Metallica who's on those things. I'm just, I'm just, I just want to be part of it and have fun with it because it's a celebration for metal. The big four was always a celebration of metal uh, coming up 
the way we did and, and, and celebrating where we are. And, and still and still relevant and still around now and, and thriving. All these fans are thriving. And I, I think it's a pretty great thing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, w- I would love a chance to see it one more time. It, it's got to be amazing just to see all the fans in, in one place for something that big. Exactly. It's not just for the band. It's for the fans. It's really for the fans. And it's just about, and it's a big celebration. The one big energy in one place is the other amazing. Now, I, I see that uh, during your break, you guys are going to be releasing the Kings Among Scotland live DVD. Yeah. It's got uh, more than just the show. I mean, you guys got interviews, behind-the-scenes footage, you do a gear rundown. I mean, there's a, there's a lot packaged into that. Yeah. And the thing I like about this specific one, and, this, uh, and just the editing of it, 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 because we went through so many edits. I remember getting the edits, even when I, first, I saw the first couple of edits we got, and I, I was really happy because I felt like they really captured the band. Like, you felt like you were on at the show, and that's what I really wanted to do with that show because that, that is such a special show for us to play in Scotland where we played the Barrowlands. It's an awesome... We always play it. When we played there, we, we always walked out of there saying, we should have paid that. We should have paid it. This time we did. I think they really captured something special. Now, is there any extra pressure when you know that you guys are filming the show not to uh, not to mess up in any way? Dude, at this point, it's um, if, if we met, look number one, I, I laugh when I mess up. If I if I make a mistake, because I am human, as did everybody else. Nobody's perfect. Uh, I goof around on it, so um, no, we we kind of know what we're doing at this point. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's um. It's part, of, it's part of the game. It, it, I, I actually look forward to it. It makes me, uh, it gets my, it gets my energy up even more, if you can believe that. Now, is there any chance of, uh, putting out a CD of that, uh, concert as well? Uh, no, there's no plans for that right now. We want to see how the DVD, uh, is accepted, so we'll see. Now, is it harder and harder for bands to go out and put new material when stores like Best Buy and, um, Target aren't going to be selling CDs anymore? Well, sure. Of course, because there's no CDs. I mean, they're literally not making enough CDs anymore. So that's the, the sad state of affairs that's going on. Actual product in people's hands is, is, is not being made. So that's, that's a really scary element to what's going on now. So we're hoping that changes. And, uh, hey, look, I love the vinyl. I, I hope that goes bigger. And I hope, you know, I don't care. Bring, bring back the CDs in a big way because I like having... Uh, something I could hold and play, you know what I mean? I think that's really important. So um, I'm hoping, uh, I, I like physical physical music where I can put a CD in or look a, a record on. It's just the way I grew up, and I, I want people to have that experience. I think it's very important. Well, I can remember as a kid, man, going to the, to the record store and picking up CDs and just going through the booklet of, of seeing what was included, artwork and little stories and lyrics and all kinds of shit. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's it's a it's like it's not just the music; it's, it's the experience about opening up the packaging. Because Anthrax is, is a band that believes in packaging. We we always think of um, a, a special time just to and, and more time and, and thought out packaging for people for fans to open it up and experience it while you're listening to the new songs. It's a it's a great experience that I think everybody should share. Now, how how did a band like you go ahead and adapt to how everything is going these days? I mean, you guys were out there from from day one, from, and now you're you're seeing digital downloads. You're seeing everyone's got to be on Facebook or Twitter or, or whatever social media shit's the most popular that week. Yeah, you adapt. How else? I mean, Apex has survived all this time by adapting. You have to adapt to the times. And do the best that you can. All, look, at the end of the day, it's all about the songs. It's all, at the, at the bottom line. How to get your, and then it's about the marketing your songs and getting them out to the most ears that can listen to them. It, it is about that. So you find the, the new and, uh, the, the new and, I guess, the day, the way they are that day. I mean, the way there is that day to get them out there. So it, it, it's not easy. It's a, it's a complete learning curve that you have to keep learning. That's it. It's the survival of the fittest, right? Yeah, definitely. Now, do you guys feel like you paved the way for rap rock bands like Limp Bizkit and things like that when you guys did your uh, track with Public Enemy? Um, 
I just think we did what what we always do. We we don't care what people say what we should do. We've always tried different things outside of our genre. And I, I whoever copied that app or whoever wanted to try that app afterwards, they made good money out of it. It's uh, I mean I know them like that slim biscuits and all that stuff. If they you know, if they got some that something out of the anthrax all good. You know, it's about music, you know, it's about expression and whoever, if they could build something, a different kind of music, fine, but we've, we've always been who we are, you know, I don't, I don't, so, uh, if we could influence anybody, go for it. Now, with the tour schedule that you guys have, like you, you mentioned earlier, I mean, it's got to be hectic for you guys to, to play almost nonstop the way you do. It's insane. In fact... Some of my, my friends in the other groups that see us and they say, how do you do it? Um, I'm proud to say that we're touring. This is how we've always done it. We've never gotten um, radio play. We've never gotten the MTV stuff when I was around. This is how we do it. We we play in front of people. We're uh, a blue-collar, hard-working a metal, metal band or rock band, whatever you want to call us. Uh, we work very hard, and we're proud of that. Now, you almost have to continue the tour, though. I mean, just not you specifically, but bands in general. Because, I mean, as we stated, people aren't selling CDs. Kids are so quick to go ahead and download music and not pay tribute back to the artist. Of course. Right. It's, it's the sign of the times. It's, it's, you have to make a living out of it, and you have to stay on the road. Most bands have to stay. There is no music business anymore, if you think about it. Um, really. I mean, it really is. There's only a few record labels out there. You know, and it's it's just not an easy business. So you do have to tour, you do have to stay on the road, and uh, and uh, and and they can go at it. Now, for for someone who has such a detailed catalog of songs as, as you guys, there, is it hard for you to go ahead and produce more music for the fans, especially when doing all the touring? People have a certain idea in their head of what they want to hear, what set list they want played. Well, my, picking set lists is always always hard because people want to hear what, you know, you have to make everybody happy and at the same time you have to, you know, keep up with what you want to do too. So uh, writing new music is not an issue because we love, we love writing music. That's what we, we're songwriters. That's what we do. And um, so that's that's not the thing. It, it's, it's really like you put a set list together and you want to make, it's got to be a, a, a really action-packed or, you want to give it something for everybody. It's not always easy to do. It has such a big catalog. But it's a good problem to have, put it that way. Now, one thing I always thought would be a unique idea for, for someone like you guys who have as many hit songs and tracks that people want to hear is giving the fans a chance to, to vote on, like, your website or something like that, what they want for a set list. Would you guys ever be game for something like that? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to start doing that. Yeah, we actually talked to our, um, our, our webmaster, we're gonna, we're coming up, he's coming up with some great ideas. I got, I got our guy, Rohan, he's, he's awesome what he does. So we're gonna start doing some fun stuff like that to get people involved. Yeah, that, I mean, like I said, that would be amazing. That'd give the fans the true chance to hear exactly, uh, yeah. The, the yeah, perfect and, set, and, so to speak. And, and it works, too. Absolutely. So we, uh, yeah, I mean, and again, you have to make, you want to make everybody happy. So people paying money to see the show, um, and see the band to him, you kind of want to, Give everybody a shot. Makes total sense. You know, I don't know what that, when that's going to happen, but it, it, certainly in the future, I hope. Now, we're, we're speaking about changes in music and things bands are doing and things like that. Do you guys do the meet and greets now? Every night. Well, I'll do one in another hour for now. <laughs> Every night. It's it's great to get the vibe from people. And, uh, and just, get, you know, because we never got that chance when I was young to meet the, the bands that I wanted. I would have loved to meet Led Zeppelin, you know, all that stuff back then. Uh, and this this is a great thing. Uh, not that we're led up, and I'm not comparing because I just one of the bands that I love. Um, I would have loved to, as a young guy, as a young musician, meeting my meeting some of the people that I like as songwriters. So I think that's a really cool thing. And for, on our side, it's great to meet people. It's just great to get a vibe from people, you know, and tell them and you know, talk to them a little bit and. Uh, and you know, just get their vibe and how and uh, and it's always nice to hear how much they like the band and all that good stuff, you know. You ever have a weird experience with with a fan that came up to you? Uh this this, this weird, weird experiences in every piece of life. It's not it's not just fans; it's everybody. 
it, 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 you know, you're on the road for nonstop. It's every every day. I can go to a coffee shop and have a weird experience. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, people are different in every every walk of life. So uh, I, I I I tend to laugh a lot, which is good. That's fun with it. <laughs> Now, yeah, best way to go. Now, uh, Charlie actually stated in an interview that you guys are going to be working on your 12th studio album. Is that uh, something that might come out to play uh, within the year or so? Well, you saw our touring schedule, right? And we don't write, we don't write on the road, so um, we'll, we'll, we'll need some time for that, you know. Uh, well, we, we don't write on the road, so, so I mean, we we got to be home and it starts. There's so much touring going on this year, so and we didn't expect. Quite honestly, we were going to start writing, and we might still take a month for ourselves to get together. Scott, Charlie, and I about getting some ideas together, and it will because everybody's got our ideas, which is good. And that and that itch will come. Um, it'll it'll happen sooner than later, but uh, it's not going to be forever. It's not going to take a long time. So we're gonna we're gonna you know make sure it's the right record for the ballet. Now, it's got to be hard to fit that in, like you said. I mean, if, especially when you guys don't write on the road, you got to take out that certain time to go ahead and say, all right, we're going to take a month to write, and then you got to take out the time to actually do the recording. Yeah, that, no, that month to write, I mean, that's just a piece of it. We take a lot longer to write our NAFLA record. It's going to be, it's a process for sure. Uh, so um, it, it's an interesting thing about how we're going to do it uh, because so much touring is coming come into play right now um we'll just see what we're gonna have to this is what managers are for <laughs> yeah right. this is what managers get paid for to start scheduling this stuff and uh we'll see because we also need time for that we're all married with kids so we want to have time with our families now charlie's actually your uncle is that right yeah we're related hmm? that's that's got to be a nice experience to go ahead and have someone as your family go be in the band with you for for so long. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's been so long at this point. I mean, we grew up playing together, so I mean, we grew up playing literally like Rush songs and and, and Maiden songs and Priest and all that good stuff, so and Sabbath, all that stuff. So, uh, I mean, it makes total sense if you think about it. And, uh, and now it's starting. I don't even think about it. He's just like a, it's like a brother to me. It doesn't really, you you know, it's just matter of fact now. Now, how do you go ahead and, and find time to do some of the side projects that you do? I mean, I know you, you've done some acting. You uh, have the side yeah. project, Attitudes and Attitude. Yeah, yeah. you know what it is? Uh, the the Attitudes and Attitude thing is Dave and I actually had time off from both of our bands, which is a rarity. And and we, we've had these songs, and it's funny because we had more time to write, which is great, and... Um, and we recorded them with Jay Rustin, our producer, and Jeff Friedel, the, uh, he plays for Perfect Circle, and uh, it just, um, we're finally going to come out with it this year. It took a long time, because just because we wanted to have time to support it, uh, and uh, we're, we're probably going to put it out in the fall of this year. Um, and uh, we're really proud of it, and it's, it's, it's just straight out rock. It's a, it's, a rock, it's a rock record that we really, really are, are into, and um, Jay Rustin loves it, so... Uh, it's a really, and people have heard it are really excited about it because it's, 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 it's just straight out, it's a rock record. And I'm, I'm proud to say that because people are expecting us to put out this heavy, heavy, heavy metal thing. And I love metal, but this is just straight out rock. And that's, you know, I, ra I'd rather just have fun, you know, and, uh, it, 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 we both, we have both have day jobs in metal bands. So, um, to put out a straight out rock record. And again, there's, there's a lot of good heavy stuff on it too. That's the important part. Some good melodies on it, so I'm, I'm, um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of it. Now, how are you guys going to find time to go ahead and do some touring? The, the two of you guys. I mean, you're busy with Anthrax well, and with everything. That, yeah, realistically, it'll have to be a stick and move kind of thing. You know, that's a little bit um, periodic stuff. You know what I mean? When opportunities arise, that's what you do. But uh, we, we both know where our day jobs are. You know. <laughs> Now, are you big on social media yourself? Are you, are you into the uh, Facebook and the Twitter and all that shit? I'm I'm, I'm on all three, but uh, reluctantly, put it that way. Um, I don't want to live on it. I I don't live on social media. As people can tell, um, I have fun. I like talking to people occasionally, and I just don't want to live on that because I think there's too much time invested into that, and I don't want to forget about life, you know? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, you see so many people with the phone glued into their hands. I mean, yeah, I just I just noticed myself doing it at one time too, way too much. Noticing I was on my phone too much, and you know what? I said, you know, that this isn't living. So I just I made a, a concerted effort just to stay away a little bit. You know, not not as much, not looking at my phone as much, and. I think it's just, I, I like to breathe a little bit more. <laughs> enjoy, the, enjoy the air, you know? Well, I mean, if somebody as busy as you, you only got certain moments of free time, you know? You got to pick and choose what you want to yeah. do wisely. It, 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 it's all cool. I mean, I, I, you know, I read it. I read the tweets. I read the you know, Instagram stuff. I keep in touch with my friends like that. Oh, it's all good. And fans, which is nice. But you just can't, I can't, like, I see a lot of people all day living on that stuff. And I just can't do that. It's just not me. I want to. I want to go out and, and get in the sun, man. You know what I mean? Well, that and it's cool that you guys still keep that mystique to yourself, though. You know, I mean, you are doing the meet and greets, you are doing some of the social media posts and all that. But I, but I want to. I want to imagine what happens on the road. I don't need to see some of these new bands that are posting what they had for lunch that fucking day and their their complete schedule. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's a great point. You know, and I can't be bothered. Can you imagine, I can give a shit less what I had for breakfast, you know what I mean? Uh, or, you know, it, it just gets to, I don't need to, uh, to know every minute of my day. It doesn't make sense, or anybody's day. Go live your life, <laughs> you know what I mean? Go live your life and, and see what you can make out of your day. And that's, that's just the way I look at it. I just don't want to live on a, a, on, a, on a phone, you know, and there's so much more to do, really. I, I go... I like to play, quite honestly, I'd rather pick up a guitar and, and, and ride a riff or just write a song, quite honestly. It's way more important to me. I, I don't know who, who has it worse, the, the, the up-and-comers that are constantly posting or, or the fans that are sitting there glued to see what's next for them. Yeah, and I get that, too. I, get, I totally understand it, but for me, I'm just saying, I always speak for me, I don't speak for anybody else. I, I just, I'll, I'll, I'll dab it a little bit, I'll look at it, that's all good. I'll post something once in a while, you know, but, um, you know, uh, I just, there's other things to do. That's what I look at it. Oh, a hundred percent, man. I mean, it, like I said, you're, you're a busy guy. You're, you're touring the world. You ain't got time to be sitting there every two seconds fiddling on yeah. a little bit. Yeah, there's, a, your hand. there's nothing wrong with it. If, if, if you're bored and you want to check it out for a little bit, I get it. I totally get it. It's a great, it's a great keeper of time, you know? So, but, uh, at the end of the day, it's each his own, right? Well, I know you got on a tight schedule. People want to follow up. They want to know more about uh, the tour dates. They want to buy tickets. They want to buy the meet and greets. Go to anthrax.com. Cool. Yeah, of course, uh, anthrax.com. And thank you for mentioning the opportunity and attitude about that. That record will come out. You can go to uh, it's on, we're on um, go to the Facebook page, opportunity and attitude. Look it up. Um, David Ellison and I, it's a, it's a lot of fun. And I uh, hope you guys check it out when it comes out. Awesome, and we're looking at a fall release for that? Yeah, fall release. We're looking for that on Megaforce. Perfect, man. Thank you so much. Cool, man. Listen, thank you. Uh, have a great day. Stay warm. You too, man. Enjoy yourself. Right. Take care. Thanks, bro. Bye-bye.